Good morning, CA Church family and everyone who is watching. We are delighted that you have joined us via Facebook Live as we are streaming this service to you this morning. And happy Palm Sunday to everyone. And what a great week that we already have planned for ministry that will take place right here on our campus at CA Church, right here in Sherwood, Arkansas. So be looking to our app, our website, all of our social media platforms, because this is a great week. We are going to celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen. Right where you are, we are going to open this service up in a word of prayer. And would you agree with me today that God is going to reach out? He is going to minister and touch not only you, but people around the world because Jesus is on the move. Amen. Father, we love you. We come before you today and our hearts are full. God, we are seeing miracles, signs and wonders taking place. Even through this pandemic, God, you are on your throne and you are ruling with, a, with a judgment, God. You are just, God, you are righteous, and God, you are calling all of humankind to the Father's heart. God, today, your word tells us that your word will not return void. It will accomplish its purpose. And right here today as we celebrate Palm Sunday and the days to come to the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God, your word tells us, for us to fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming. And today we celebrate the risen king in Jesus' name. God, come and comfort us with your peace that passes all understanding, God. That you would minister just in great ways today. That you would fill our hearts with hope and wonder, God. Anoint our worship team as they lead us into the presence of God today. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen.
church family and all those watching today. God, you, you are our blessing. You are our hope. And we can have faith, not fear today.
worship team to stay with us for a second. I want to ask you to really participate in this moment where the Lord is moving by His Spirit. And right there where you're watching, many of you with your families, with loved ones, I want to ask you to really turn this into a really interactive moment. A moment to interact your faith as the Lord is moving and He's speaking and He's providing hope for you and He's providing blessing for you. So what I want to ask you to do right where you are is if you'll take your family by the hand. Right there where you are, grab their hand. Maybe you want to stand to your feet together and form a circle right there with your loved ones. Maybe you're watching this and physically you're alone, would you just raise your hand and just take hold of the hand of God right there where you are and just begin to call out to God. <laughs> oh, dear son of God, dear daughter of God, our king is coming. Take hope today. Trust in him that he will never leave you or forsake you. He is for you. And I want to turn this back over to our worship team. And they are going to lead us through this again. Really begin to cry out from the depths of your heart. God is your provider. He is your fortress. He is your strong tower. He is your king today. Do not fear or be dismayed. May he lift your countenance today in the presence of God. Lead us in that again.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, let that encourage you today that God is for you and He is with you. And we are praying blessing, continued blessing and favor over your family today and every day. Amen. Amen. Again, we want to greet you this morning, wherever you are. It's awesome. And we are so thankful that you've joined us here at Christian Assembly via this Facebook live service. And again, our hearts are full, and I pray that your hearts are full. I pray and am and, and believing that you are seeing the faithfulness of God in your life. Amidst all of the chaos, God remains faithful. Put your trust in Him. Lean on Him, not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways. Acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. Amen. Amen. God bless you. If you are a part of our church family, we want to say a big, great thank you today. The ways that you are staying connected to our church, the ways that you are remaining faithful in your giving and in your service. Pastor and I, we want to say thank you today. And God bless you. Today, again, is Palm Sunday. It's also the first Sunday of the month. We are now into April. And for us here at CA Church, it's Missions Sunday. And we want to provide you the opportunity to continue to give into the ministries of our missionaries. You know that some of our missionaries themselves are battling the coronavirus. Remember them in your prayers. Remember our missionaries that are spread globally, still being faithful to getting the message of hope out to people that don't know Jesus. There's no better time than right now to continue to give to our missionaries. You can go to our app, our church app, and give to our missions endeavors today. You can go to our website, christianassembly.org, and give there and just remain faithful to our missionaries and to the ministries here at our church. Again, if you're watching on Facebook, you've not yet liked our church, go ahead and, and do that. Like our church page. That way you will not miss any notifications that come to you. That way we can get these live streams out to more and more people. God is blessing us by continually sending people across the internet to these services. And we want people to be able to see these services. Again, access our church app to stay current on what's happening here. You can find sermon notes, the podcast, you can listen to sermons on our website. The videos are being uploaded weekly. Both our Wednesday night adult Bible studies, our Wednesday night youth services, and of course, Sunday morning. So we do not want you to miss out on any of that. Again, go to our website, our app, to give. If you need us, we are still holding normal office hours, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We are here to help you any way that we can. We are leaving our sanctuary open for you to come and participate in prayer, particularly on Wednesdays from noon to one. We are meeting in our sanctuary, crying out to God and believing that God is moving and that he is hearing the cries of his people. He has compassion for us and he is hearing us and he's being moved by our prayers, by your prayers. So remain faithful. Again, our telephone number here at the office, 501-835-2841. Ministry around here is taking on a new look, but we are here to help you and we're here to serve you. So remain connected in all of these ways that we've talked about. Amen. I want to invite pastor to come right now. Thank you, Pastor Jonathan. Before we go any further, as the musicians were leading us in worship, I felt the Spirit of God give me a word. And I want to share that word with you right now. 
the Lord would say to you that He is for you and that He has not forsaken you. Many of my people, says the Lord, have looked to other things. They've gone to cisterns which cannot hold water. But I'm calling you, my church, to come to me. Come to me and I will give you rest. For I am with you and I am for you. Have not I given you my son? Look to him and he will help you. For there is no living water anywhere else. Come to me, says the Lord, and I will give you rest. Church, I want you to receive that. I believe God was speaking that word to me as we were in worship just a moment ago. What a beautiful, beautiful spirit of the Lord. And I want to thank our musicians and thank my wife Katie for her help and for Rebecca, for everyone, all of our team. We have a wonderful team here. And church, it's so good to be able to come to you this way. I appreciate you joining us here on this Facebook Live service. And let me encourage you to be with us every Sunday until we get finished with these restrictions. We will be live streaming at 1030 on Sunday mornings right here from the auditorium of CA Church. Also, on Wednesdays at 7, uh, we'll be live streaming our uh, Wednesday Bible study and also our youth service. So I hope that you will tune in. And be sure, as Pastor Jonathan said, like us on Facebook and share us with your friends. We want to get the word out as much as we can. And we are touching hundreds of people every week. And we thank you for helping us. We're just getting started. We had just initiated a lot of these things before the coronavirus pandemic really took effect and the lockdown restrictions were enforced. And so now we're trying to cooperate with our authorities we're trying to cooperate with our governor and president because we do want to save lives. We do want to uh, do our part in this crisis to, to mitigate the circumstances and mitigate this sickness. We trust and pray that you're doing well, and we, our hearts are with you today. It's so good to be able to join. You know the Spirit of God's not limited. We can come and gather this way, even though we're apart, we're distanced, we are not separated because of the blood of Jesus and because of the Spirit of God. And we are continuing to pray for you. We love you. God bless you. Today, we want to give as we continue our worship. And I want to thank our church family. So many of you have truly blessed me and humbled me as I've seen you step up and give as never before. It's been wonderful to see the support. Uh, we do have needs but our church family has been so faithful. We love you and thank you for that. Some of you have been giving and you've never given before. And, and that is so appreciated at this time. We do need your help. If this broadcast is blessing you, if this live stream is blessing you, please give to help us continue. As Pastor Jonathan said, this is Missions Sunday. And if you have a missions gift, I want to ask you to please give it today. You can give it through our uh, church website, christianassembly.org, or you can go and download the app. If you don't have it yet, be sure and go to your app store, your Google Play store, and type in Christian Assembly Sherwood. Download the free app. Get it on your phone. Launch it. And in that app, you can do a lot of neat things. You'll see a lot of things there that will be a blessing to you. We've got videos for you to watch of these services. We have sermon notes. In fact, my sermon notes for today are in the app. You can go to the Sunday tab, click it, and get into the sermon notes, and you can follow along as I'm preaching today or in any of our services. Also at the bottom there, you can uh, click on the Give tab, and it will take you to a secure site where you can give, and you will see the categories. You can give uh, specifically to missions in and through the app, so please do that. Remember our missionaries. Many of them are, are having some very difficult struggles one of our missionaries, and this is the missions card that shows the support of our current missionaries. We have 37 home and foreign missionaries uh, and missions organizations that we support on a monthly or annual basis. And that we want to especially pray for our Assemblies of God World Missions Director, Brother Greg Mundus. He needs our prayers. He is uh, in St. Louis receiving treatment and uh, on a ventilator. We need to pray for him. Let's remember Thomas Carpenter, Thomas and Angela, some dear friends of ours and uh, longtime friends, missionaries with Compassion Link. Uh, they minister to people with disabilities, and Thomas has been in the hospital in Springfield on a ventilator. We need to keep him in prayer. So remember them in your prayers. 
and remember them in your giving as well. So today when you give, be sure that uh, you remember your missions gift, your BGMC gift. You can also select, I believe there is a category for BGMC in our giving as well when you scroll through the tab and you make your gift ready. You will get a confirmation email uh, letting you know that your gift has been processed. Let me share a scripture with you as you prepare to worship with your offerings. This is Malachi 3 and 10, and you know it. It says, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. One translation says that God will open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not have room enough to receive. You know, I need that kind of blessing. How about you? I need a floodgate blessing. And God can do it. You know, He's going to be faithful. He's going to take care of us. What an opportunity to see the hand of God, the miracle-working power of God during this crisis. I want to encourage you, continue to trust the Lord with your giving. I know it takes faith to give. Maybe some of you may have lost your job. You know, I've been ministering to people this week. Some of our people have lost jobs. Some of our people, uh, their business has been closed. I want you to know we're praying for you, but I also want to encourage you. Katie and I have been through those kinds of tough things too through the years and through the ministry. And of course now, the churches are being especially hard hit because we can't gather, people can't give. Not everyone is online. Not everyone can give that way. But you know, we believe God's going to be faithful. And this last week, I went ahead and put my tithe check and sent it off to my district fellowship because we feel like we need to be faithful in what we're doing. And if we're faithful, God will bless us. And we know that it's a step of faith. But continue to give and see what God will do. He says, prove me now. Prove me now and see if I'll not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing. You'll not have room enough to receive. I want to pray with you today as we bless this offering and as we pray for our missionaries. And let's also pray that God will help our people. Many of them, as I've just mentioned, have uh, been severely affected economically. Let's pray today that God will bless them and that he will supply the needs. Would you join me? Dear Father in heaven, we're thankful that we can come to you. And again, we're not separated by time or space. You do not leave us. You do not forsake us. Your word tells us, Psalm 91, 15, that you are with us in trouble. And Lord, we know that you are faithful. And we give you praise. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the food we had to eat today. Thank you for the place we had to stay. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather and we can worship over the internet as we're doing now. Lord, people may be giving even now. I pray that you will bless their gifts. I pray that you will uh, supply the need of every person connected to our church. We pray for our missionaries today that you will touch them and bless them and supply their needs. We especially pray for Thomas and Angela Carpenter and ask that you bring healing to Thomas, bring healing to Brother Mundus. Raise them up, Lord, we ask, for your glory so that they can continue the great ministry they've been doing. And Lord, I bless the church family and I pray the promises of God to be realized in their lives. Lord, that you will open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing They'll not have room enough to receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you, folks, we're going to get through this situation. God is still on the throne, and greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. So you stand strong. I know that the devil will come along, and he'll try to put fear in your heart. Just this past week, we sent out our church newsletter. My column was entitled, Faith, Not Fear. I want you to stand in faith. Listen, we're not like the people of the world who have no heavenly father. We have a father in heaven and he's watching over us and he's going to help us. He's not a deadbeat dad. He's going to take care of you and me. So let's trust him. Let's believe him. I think we can come out of this thing stronger than we were before. And God can bless you even in the midst of a trial. I want to remind you when the children of Israel were in Egyptian captivity and bondage, they didn't suffer the plagues of the Egyptians. They were in the land of Goshen and God blessed them. 
And I believe he can bless us even in the midst of difficult times if we stay strong and if we stay faithful. Let me take you to God's word this morning. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. And I'd like to begin reading at the very first verse. Again, if you want to follow along, my notes are in the church app. You can go into the app, click on Sundays. You should be able to click on the tab sermon notes. And today's title is The Trial of Your Faith. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers gathered, or scattered, I should say, throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now, if for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ." I'd like to use verse 7 as a text. The trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold. Let's talk about the trial of your faith. Master, I pray a blessing upon the ministry of your word. And I pray that our hearts will be fertile soil for the seed of God's word. Help me, Holy Spirit, to communicate your truth today to your people. In your mighty name, amen. Peter is writing this letter to Christians who are scattered uh, throughout uh, the area outside of Jerusalem. They were suffering severe physical persecution. True Christians everywhere, at one time or another in their lives, will go through some degree of suffering or persecution. I really believe that. Jesus never promised us an easy life, but he did promise us eternal life. And we need to remember that. John 16, 33, Jesus said, In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. But Peter mentions in this passage three things regarding the believer's experience. And I want to highlight those things today. The first thing he mentions is a future expectation. A future expectation. Notice who Peter is addressing. I think it's important to know who you are. And I want to tell you something. Today, you're a child of God. If you've put your faith and trust in Jesus, you are a child of God. And I, I want you to see how God sees us in this passage. First of all, the Lord sees, he, he addresses them through Peter. He says, the strangers scattered. The strangers scattered. So he was aware of their situation. And I want to tell you, God's aware of our situation. He knows what we're going through. He is fully aware of the suffering, the pandemic that's going on around us. He's not disassociated with it. He's not, he's not separated from you. He is with you in your struggle. He doesn't leave us when things get bad. He walks with us through our circumstances. And notice also it says here that we're the elect according to the foreknowledge of God. That is, He sees us as we really are. We are chosen he has chosen us. Think about that for a moment. He chose me. He chose you. When I was a young, uh, young man in junior high school, I really was insecure when it came to athletics, even though I later became a, a really good athlete. But during that time, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence. And I remember PE classes, we'd divide up into teams, which I always hated that because it always came down to me and the other guy with the glasses and pocket protector. And... I always just didn't have a lot of confidence. But as I got older and as I got into high school and then on into college, I found out that I was really a pretty good athlete. I, I, I made the college powerlifting team and, and had a 
good deal of success there. And then later on, even after I came here to pastor into my early to mid-30s, I had even more success. So I, I enjoyed a good time there. But I, I said all that to let you know, God sees you as you really are. He sees the potential in your life. He doesn't look at you like other people look at you. He looks at you and he sees what he has created and you're beautiful to him. You're his masterpiece. He has created you for good works and he has chosen you. Maybe your family has rejected you, but God hasn't rejected you. He loves you. He cares for you and he has chosen you. And we are sanctified, the Bible says. That is, we are set apart from the world and we're set apart unto him. It's really a twofold application to the word sanctification. We're set apart from the world. That's why we're called strangers. We're in the world, but we're not of it. We're pilgrims passing through it. I think this crisis has made a lot of Christians realize who they really are and what's really important. Isn't it funny how we get so wrapped up in the little things of life? And now, people for the first time, some people are thinking about their mortality. Some people are thinking about how they're going to live. Maybe the Lord needed to redirect our attention. Our attention's been on the false gods of this world. Money, entertainment, sports. Look at those gods now. They're flat on their face. God wants to get our attention. He wants us to look to Him. He wants us to realize this world is not our home. We have a home that's eternal. A home that's coming. And so we're sanctified. We're set apart from the world. We're also set apart for God's purposes. See, I think a lot of people have been living their lives for their own selfish purposes. But I want to tell you something. You're created to serve God. You're made for more than just getting up, going to work, getting a paycheck, coming home and watching TV. God created you for His purpose, for His kingdom. He gave you time, talent, and resources that He wants you to use for Him, for His kingdom, for His church. Praise the Lord. So you're set apart by the Spirit and by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Think about that. You are set apart by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I've talked to a lot of people, and a lot of people tell me things like, well, you know, Pastor, I've got my own relationship worked out with God. God and I are on good terms. And I want to tell you something. If those terms don't involve faith and trust in what Jesus did alone at Calvary, if you're not trusting in what he did by shedding his blood, if your faith isn't in him, if it's in some sort of good work that you've done, you're trusting in something that cannot save. You better have your faith based on what Jesus did at Calvary because that's the only thing that can save. Being a good person doesn't save you. There are many good moral people who will not make heaven because they haven't trusted in Christ. They haven't confessed and repented of their sin. You see, God's standard is perfection. And you and I can't measure up. That's why Jesus came. That's why we're, we, there was a Palm Sunday 2,000 years ago when Jesus entered Jerusalem and the whole place was shaken as people were crying out, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. Blessed be the son of David. He was coming into his kingdom. The Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags in God's sight. You see, man needs redemption. And the only thing that can give him that is faith in Christ. Faith in what Jesus did at the cross of Calvary. The Bible says those who have trusted him here in 1 Peter chapter 1, we've been given an abundance of grace and peace. Praise the Lord. There's no replacement for peace. There are many people who have money today. <laughs> They're sequestered in their homes. They're afraid. They're living in fear. They have money. They have this world's good, but they don't have grace and peace. And I want to tell you there's no substitute for that. Grace, grace, God's grace. Grace that's greater than all my sin. I have grace that covers my sin. I have peace in my heart, unshakable peace. Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in fear. See, God has chosen those who are born again. We've been predestined according to the foreknowledge of God to receive an abundance of grace and peace. Thus, we've been set apart or sanctified by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. That makes us strangers and pilgrims in this present world. I want to remind you, we have a future expectation. Historically, 
God's people have always been a persecuted people. I know all of us have learned about the Holocaust in school. Some of us live through that. Some of you watching today, you're old enough to have lived through it. You know about it. Many years ago in 1995, my dad, brother, and I went to Israel. And we went through the Holocaust Museum. During the Holocaust, six million Jews were killed by Nazi Germany. It was a terrible time, but God's people have always been a persecuted people. In the first three centuries of A.D., the Roman government greatly persecuted Christians. They were thrown to the lions. They were burned at the stake. Many other atrocities were committed against those Christian people. But did you know today in the 21st century, persecution against Christians is at its highest in modern history. And it's increasing. A staggering 11 Christians a day are killed for their faith in the top 50 countries ranked on the world watch list by open doors. So it's still going on today. Martyrs are still existent today. But you and I have a hope that extends beyond this life. We have a future expectation, and it's a living expectation. Verse 3 in our text says it is a lively hope. That means it's a living hope. Aren't you thankful that we have a real faith? Something that, that it's not just pie in the sky. It's real, a living faith. It's an incorruptible expectation. The Bible says it's undefiled. It fades not away. It's reserved in heaven for you. Some of us have been watching the stock market, and I'd advise against it right now. It's time not to watch it because it, it doesn't reflect reality. And many people are, are uh, in terms of what it's going to be. But many people today, their hope is in the stock market. Their hope is in their 401K. You know, wings, or rather, I should say, riches have a way of making themselves wings and flying away. We've got to realize that our trust can't be in our 401K or our money. Our trust has to be in the Lord. Jesus said, we're to lay up treasures in heaven where moth and rust can't corrupt and where they can't be stolen or lost. We need to lay up treasure in heaven. And you know what? Our treasure there is secure. Our treasure there is incorruptible. It cannot be done away with. It's a secure expectation. Not only is it living and incorruptible, it's a secure expectation. Verse 5 says, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Praise God, we are kept. We are, we're not saved one minute and lost the next, but we're kept by the power of God. I'm not saying you, you can't neglect and walk away from your faith, but I'm saying as long as you stay in Christ, you are secure in Him. He will keep you. Thank God we have... But even though we have manifold trials and temptations, we have a future expectation. Colossians 1.27 reassures us that it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Now the second thing Peter mentions regarding the believer's experience is his present situation. Verse 6 says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice. That is, we rejoice in the future hope that we have in Christ, though now for a season... If need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. Manifold temptations are trials, tribulations. Even though we have great reason to rejoice about our future expectations, sometimes our present situation leaves a lot to be desired. The Bible recognizes the human condition. It doesn't gloss over it. And there are times when we are in heaviness because of numerous trials. Some people today are in heaviness. What I see today is a lot of fear. But some people are in heaviness because maybe they're isolated even more so due to this pandemic. Maybe they're going through difficulties. Maybe they've lost a job. Maybe their business has been closed. And they are in heaviness. I want to encourage you to know that God understands that. And sometimes Christians hurt. It's unrealistic to think that we're always just buoyant and, and joyous all of the time. We do have joy. We do have happiness. But sometimes we go through trials and sometimes we hurt. Charles Spurgeon was known as the Prince of Preachers, the great pastor of the Metropolitan Tabernacle of London back in the 1800s. He was probably the first megachurch pastor ever. But he suffered terribly from gout. And the last 20 years of his life, 
he was plagued with this condition. And sometimes he would have to lie in bed for weeks at a time because his joints would swell and it would be too painful to move. Some saints came to pray for him one day and they encouraged him to be more like another Christian they knew who was enduring an affliction that was far worse than his. Don't you appreciate people like that? I mean, when you're going through something, they've been through worse and they can all, it's like, it's like my grandfather used to say, if you've been to the moon, they've been there twice and they've put a flag on it. But there are some people, they always want to encourage you in that way. Job's comforters is what they ought to be called. But Brother Spurgeon was reminded of this scripture. And he said, sometimes we are in heaviness because of manifold temptation. God doesn't overlook our condition. He understands what you're going through. And, and moreover, can I tell you this? When Jesus went to the cross, he bore our sicknesses, and our pains. If you go back to Isaiah 53, that prophecy about Jesus, when he went to the cross, it says he bore our sicknesses, our pains, that our weaknesses, our infirmities. You see, the Lord, when he was hanging on the cross, he became my sin, but not only that, he became my painful disease. He understands the pain of cancer because he bore it at Calvary. He understands the pain of separation because he was separated from his heavenly father at Calvary. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So Jesus understands how we feel. The Bible says he is touched with the feelings of our weaknesses, our infirmities, or even our sicknesses. Can I remind you that he went through the Garden of Gethsemane? When he was in that garden, the Bible says he sweat great drops of blood. That was the pressure he was under. And he went on to the cross of Calvary. <laughs> but I want to tell you something. Beyond that cross, there was a resurrection day. There was an empty tomb. Praise God. And you may be going through a Garden of Gethsemane experience right now. But I want to tell you that after you get through that experience, there is a resurrection day for you. You can experience the glory of an empty tomb. And because of that, you can rejoice. Because Jesus is risen, you can rejoice. It's like the old standard that the Gaithers wrote. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I don't have to fear. Hallelujah. So I have grace for my present situation. Here's the third thing Peter mentions regarding the believer's experience. And that is a coming manifestation. Look at verse 7 again. He says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. What Peter is talking about here is a coming manifestation. He's talking about when Jesus comes and he appears to his people. The Bible says we will be changed and we will be like him. Hallelujah. So the testing of our faith, according to this scripture, is much more precious than gold. Gold is very valuable, very precious. It's a precious metal. But the Bible says that our faith is more precious than that. And it's precious to God because it represents a memorial of our love for him. Remember the story of Mary who anointed Jesus with the alabaster box of ointment. That ointment was so precious, that perfume was so costly, some have estimated it to be as much as a year's wage. Mary took that box, she broke it, she poured it over the Messiah, and she wept over his feet with her tears, and she washed his, his feet with her hair. Now some people thought that was just over the top. Oh, that was just too extravagant. But I want to ask you something. Is anything too extravagant for our Lord? We're talking about the Son of God. And there were those so-called pious people who were there. Someone said, oh, well, that money that she wasted, wasted, could have been spent to give to the poor. You know what Jesus said about that? He said, the poor you have with you always, but me you don't always have. He said, leave her alone. He said, she's anointed me for my burial, and this, what she has done, will be remembered as a memorial to her throughout all generations. 
So you see, her worship garnered her a spot in God's eternal word. I want to tell you something. God knows what you're going through right now. He knows the sacrifice involved. Some of you think, well, I'm just laboring in obscurity and nobody knows what I've done. Nobody knows what I've sacrificed. Can I tell you something? God knows. He sees it. It doesn't escape his attention. He saw what Mary did. One day he was watching the treasury. He saw a little widow woman come and she cast in just a couple of pennies. And he's, there were those that, that, that saw that and Jesus said, I want you to see something. This woman has given more than everybody else. And the disciples said, Lord, she didn't give in as much as these others. And he said, no, but she gave in all that she had. She gave everything she had. And thus, her sacrifice was noted. And the Lord Jesus noted her. She found also a place in God's eternal word. What I'm trying to say is God doesn't overlook our sacrifice. He knows what you're going through. And moreover, He will reward it. And that's what this verse is telling us. That there is a coming manifestation that is worth all of the sacrifice and worth all of the pain. I remember many years ago, I used to be a big basketball fan, and I was watching uh, Michael Jordan when he won his first NBA championship trophy, world championship trophy. They had finally gotten through the Detroit Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals, and they went on to the, to the finals, and they won the NBA World Championship Finals. I remember, and maybe you've seen the pictures or the video, he was embracing that trophy, kissing that trophy, weeping over it because it represented to him a lifetime of labor and achievement. You know, I think that's a little bit of what it's going to be like when we get home to heaven and we receive our eternal reward. The testing of our faith will result in our praise and honor and glory at the coming manifestation of Christ. The Bible puts it this way in 1 Corinthians 2, 9. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things God has prepared for those who love Him. Can I tell you that the world we see around us, it's fading away. It's passing away. And a far more eternal life is coming. There's coming a time when God is going to reward all those who faithfully endured hardship for His name's sake. In 2 Corinthians 4, 17, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Romans 8, 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Romans 8, 31, listen to this. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? As I come down to the end of this message, I want to leave you with one more scripture. This is a passage from 1 Corinthians 15. This is the resurrection chapter. Next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. He's the only one who's ever come back from the dead. And he did it to prove he was the Son of God. In fact, all of Christianity hinges on that truth. If there is no resurrection then there is no forgiveness of sin and there is no eternal life. And in fact, in this same passage, Paul says, if there is no resurrection, then we, as Christians, are of all men most miserable or to be pitied because we're deceived. And then we should just eat and drink and be merry because this life is all there is. But there is a resurrection. There is a life to come. And this is what... Paul says under the inspiration of the Spirit, verse 51, he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Isn't it wonderful that the Christian's death is considered just sleep? The body is asleep. The soul is with Jesus, but the body is only sleeping. It's going to be resurrected in newness of life. It says, We shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So, when this incorruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, 
My brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, inasmuch as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. We have a coming manifestation. You see, the trial of our faith is more precious than gold because it is working for us a far more eternal weight of glory. That verse I, I gave you a moment ago, 2 Corinthians 4, 17. This is how it's stated in the NIV. It says, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. You see, this life is passing away and eternity is coming. So let me ask you, where will you spend eternity? Are you going to spend eternity in heaven with Jesus? Or will you spend it apart from him in a devil's hell? You see, one of those two places is where all of us will spend eternity. And for those of us who have put our faith and trust in Christ, who've confessed our sin, we can spend eternity with Jesus. And I want to invite you to give your heart to Jesus now. You see, being a good person doesn't give you entrance into heaven. Jesus said you must be born again. Man can't save himself. If man could save himself, then Jesus would not have had to live a sinless life and die on a cross. But the only way God could save man, Almighty God, is that he himself had to become a man, live a sinless life, and then take our sin to the cross, die in our place, and rise again. Not just die, but rise again. Anybody could die, but only the Son of God could rise again. So let me invite you today. Will you put your faith and trust in Jesus? You might be watching this live stream and you've never asked Jesus in your heart. You've never confessed your sin. Or maybe you've never understood this truth. I want you to know you can be saved now. You can have your sins forgiven. You can know that regardless of what happens, I'm going to spend eternity with Jesus. Would you pray with me? Dear Father in heaven, I pray for those who might be watching today who've never accepted Christ. Or maybe they've never understood this truth. Lord Jesus, you told us in your word in John chapter 3 that we must be born again. But you've also told us, Lord, that if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You've also told us in your word that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, your word tells us you're not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. I'm praying, Lord, that as we pray here, people watching us either live or via replay will give their hearts to Christ. All you have to do is open your heart and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin and help me to live for you. If you pray that prayer sincerely, I want to invite you to continue to join us here for our Facebook Live services, 7 p.m. on Wednesdays, adult Bible study and youth services, and also 10.30 a.m. on Sundays. If you have accepted Christ, or maybe if you've renewed your faith in Christ, maybe you knew the Lord at one time, but you haven't been following Him. If you've renewed your faith, why not let us know? Would you send me uh, an email or, or go through our app and just click off the prayer request? You can write me at pastorhugh at christianassembly.org. That's pastorhugh at christianassembly.org. Don't forget that you can communicate with us through our telephone line, 501-835-2841, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 to 4.30 p.m., 8.30 a.m. You can also uh, drop by if you're able. And for those of you who are unable to go through our app or through our website, uh, you can mail us. Our address here is CA Church, Christian Assembly Church, 10601 Highway 107, Sherwood, Arkansas, 72120. So I hope you will. Many of you have written to us. You've dropped in your offerings through the mail. We appreciate that so very, very much. As we end this live stream today, I'd like for us to join in a word of prayer for our country. This past week, President Trump has, uh, has encouraged and 
the country and he has warned the country that we should be ready to see many deaths this week. Let's pray that the Spirit of God will mitigate those deaths. Amen. Let's pray for a swift end to this coronavirus. Let's ask God to bring our country back. Would you join me right now? Lord, we come to you in prayer. We're thankful for the promise that you give us that if we will pray, if we will turn, Lord, that you will hear, you will forgive, and you will heal. Lord, we pray for the healing of our nation today. We ask that you give our president and our governors wisdom from God. All of our leaders, we pray for those who are on the front lines fighting this disease, that you will protect them and keep them. And Lord, that this week you will spare lives. Bring an end to this plague, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. And Lord, for those who are watching today, I pray that you will give them protection and give them peace in their hearts. And we ask this in your mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for letting us come into your home today. Have a great week, and we will see you Wednesday.